So, on the acquaintance level, uh, you've gotten to know a bit more about God, and you're learning how to trust God, but you're not talking to Him enough. Therefore, you kind of stay on this level. And unfortunately, it causes the believer to suffer defeat in their walk with God. It's not God's will for us as believers to be defeated by anything. We're not to be defeated. Let, let me look at another scripture. Uh, I think. <clears throat> third John. Turn over to third John. Not the second John, but third John. And we're going to look at that second verse to see what God's will is for us. In a nutshell. <laughs> Can you get it? Say, I got it. All right. King James Version. And then uh, you probably have it highlighted over there. Maybe. The message Bible, but if not, you'll be very close to it. Third John, I want you, what? Third John the second verse. And I'm going to read it in King James. And this was actually a salutation, but this was God's desire spoken oh. through the Apostle John. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Be in health, even as your soul prosper. Now I want y'all to get that. There's three things there. And although the order looks like prosperity, money, health, and soul, the most important thing is what? Your soul. The most important thing is that your soul prosper. What is the soul? And how does the soul prosper? By what? Being about the Through the word of God. Remember that scripture we just read over there in James? He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you get your soul right. Get your mind right. Get your will right. My God. And if you get your mind right, your will will make the right decisions based on the spirit of the word that's in your mind. And then your emotions will be under control. You don't have you won't always be flying off the handle because stuff don't go the way you want it to go. You won't always have an issue with anger management. <laughs> The reason people get so angry is because their, their, their soul is out of control. I wrote a song and I, I, I told Jason about it. I wrote it a long time ago. I think I've done it in a couple of praise and worship settings that I was doing before I came to Austin. And I told him I need to bring it back out and let him update the music or whatever. But the song says... Uh, What does the song say? Uh, uh, through thy word. Come to my mind. Cleanse my mind. Through thy word. And everything is through what? Through the word. Not through my opinions. Not through somebody else's opinions. Not through somebody else's thought. Through thy word. Cleanse my mind. Through thy word, direct my will. Yes, Through thy word, control my emotion. Purify my soul and cleanse me through thy word. See, that ought to be our prayer every day. Through thy word, cleanse my mind. See. When we get down into searching scripture, we find out how our minds are supposed to think. Uh, uh, I think 
when we found this scripture in our session on Friday night, where it said, uh, think on these things. What was that? Was it Ephesians? Four and nine. Yep. What was it, Ephesians? Yeah. No, Philippians. Four Philippians. Nine. Four and nine. See? Through thy word, cleanse my mind. Cleansing your mind is how you think. So, so, James teaches the people at the church of Philippi to think on these things. If you want your mind to be cleansed, let's go to Philippians. We're doing a lot of scripture going back and forth, but that's good. Y'all, I hope y'all writing these scriptures down so that you can go back to them and read them in your own quiet time and in your own study time. Philippians 4 and 8. Well, 4 and 7. Let's go 7 and 8. And 9. <laughs> the word is good, y'all. The word is so good. My goodness. Somebody read Philippians 4 and 7 because we're talking about cleansing the mind. Read somebody. Who got it? Philippians 4 and 7, 8, 9. Read. Oh. Oh, read. Before you know it, is that what you're talking about? Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Is that what they say? It's you wonderful know. what happens when Christ display, displaces worry at the center of your life. Is that yeah. Philippians 4? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's not the message Bible. Oh. That's, okay, well, let me give me King James or, or, or yeah. New International or somebody else first before I go I'll to the message. I'll read come Philippians on. 4 and 7. Uh -huh. 7 says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Uh -huh. A, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And then 9 says, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put in to practice, and the God of peace will be with you. My God. You want to think, you want to cleanse your mind. <laughs> Stop thinking about all of this foolishness that y'all hear every day about people, about the church. All these negative things. When it comes to your door, slam the door. <laughs> Don't let that stuff in your mind. Y'all hear me? Because it only boggles the mind and leads you into a direction that is not God's will. It's, it's a distraction for your living holy. See? Read it in the message box. Go read it. Okay, Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Summing, summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Ooh, that's some good stuff right there. Yeah. Golly. You want to cleanse your mind? Yes. If you've been boggled down with a lot of uh, darkness from the past, even, here's the answer. Think on those things that are lovely. Think on those things that are pure. Think on those things that are of good report. Don't, 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 don't. Let your mind get boggled down with he said, she said, they said. Who cares? Taught in my session, you are not responsible for anybody else's thoughts. So what that they think you ugly? No. That's their thought. Amen. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, I'm so serious. You know what keeps us always upset and frustrated and angry and want to fight? We are 
are taking responsibility for somebody else's thoughts. They're not yours. Clean up your thoughts and don't worry about the rest of the people's thoughts. It's theirs. It's their thoughts that's going to either get them to heaven or hell. <laughs> so why you want to take responsibility for them? You already got enough responsibility worrying about your own thoughts. <laughs> and we think all day long, all in our sleep. Now you want to take responsibility for somebody else's thoughts too. Lord have mercy. No wonder people are going crazy. <laughs> You're not responsible for somebody else's thoughts. But on that acquaintance level, these folks are taking too much responsibility for everybody else's thoughts and they're not staying in communication. Because guess what? If you stay in communication with God on a regular basis, you won't have time to think about everybody else's That's thoughts. Right. And when their thoughts come to you, you hear it and say, well, so be it. God bless them. I'm sorry. I'm on my way to heaven Amen. to meet the king. Amen. I got time to stop on the wayside, pick your flowers, Amen. and talk about your ugly weeds that you got over there. You, you have to get a focused attitude. That's what cleansing the mind is about. You start cleansing the mind. You think about only the stuff that is what this brother said. And then start putting it into practice. Put into practice getting rid of all negative reports. The prophet said, whose report are you going to believe? I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Uh, and his report says, I am victorious. His report says, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. His report said, I don't have to worry about all the negative stuff that you're talking about and how you're trying to sabotage what I'm doing. I know that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's the report that I'm going to believe. And Paul says, he tells the church there, he said, now when y'all think on these things, y'all, everything that you've heard, everything that you've been taught, everything that you've received from the gospel, he ain't talking about from the, the Austin statesman. But everything that you've heard and received from God, do those things and your life will be victorious and you will not suffer defeat in your walk with Christ. Amen. That's on the acquaintance level. That means that you're not really, you're talking to them, but not enough. You need to bump up your communication line. Now the third level. Is the intimate level. Who's got the dictionary meaning for intimate? I got Wikipedia. That works. That work. Wikipedia, that's, that's the dictionary. Um, What's it say? It did intimacy instead of intimate. But it said intimacy generally refers to the feeling of being in a close personal association and belonging together. It is a familiar and very close effective connection with another as a result of a bond that is formed through knowledge and experience of the other. Genuine intimacy in human relationships requires dialogue, transparency, vulnerability, and reciprocity. Is that how you say that? Reciprocity? Okay. Um, as a noun, an intimate is a person with whom we have a particularly close relationship. Okay, I, I need you to back up a little bit because there's several words in there that I want you, I want everybody to write them down. Yeah. All right, so start back there where start talking about transparency. What this is this is this is what happens in an intimate relationship. What does it say? Genuine intimacy in human relationships requires dialogue. Use words slowly now so we can get it Get it down. Okay, the first one is what? Dialogue. All right, y'all write that down. Because see, cause see, you know, once we understand what it means to be intimate with God, based on just knowledge. Okay, the first thing is what? Dialogue. Okay? Not monologue. Dialogue. <laughs> what does that indicate? Because you got to hear him too. Ah, that means somebody got to stop long enough. Talking yeah, to do what? Right. Yeah. To listen. To listen. I, I just thought I'd just throw that in. Okay, number one is dialogue. What's the next one? Transparency.